So far in class, we've covered systems where the mass isn't changing when we're doing our Lagrangian mechanics. So today we're going to cover the physics that are involved when the mass changes, but you still want to use Lagrangian mechanics to find your equations of motion. So the first thing that we're going to do is an example with a rocket moving through free space, just as an easy example. The Lagrangian is still going to be T minus V. And the kinetic energy of our rocket let's call it X dot. So the kinetic energy would be one half M x dot squared. And then because this is moving through free space, the potential is going to be, the potential energy is going to be zero. So our Lagrangian is just one half m x dot squared. We do our standard Euler-Lagrange setup. Take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. And that gives you m x dot. Now we want to take the derivative with respect to time of that. And we get the time derivative, total time derivative of m x dot. Now, because we're saying the mass is able to change in the system, we have to take this time derivative with respect to the m and the x dot. So that would look something like this. And the other term in our Euler-Lagrange is just going to be zero because there is no, no terms that are position dependent. OK, so now we've got our Euler-Lagrange set up. And when we plug in the partial derivatives that we just found, we get something that looks like this. And so if we wanted to solve for the f equals ma on the left side, we would move the m dot x dot to the other side. And here we are going to specify that this x dot is not the velocity of the rocket, but the velocity of the mass being expelled. So the way that the rocket works is it's got this mass that it's blowing out the backside. And so that mass is being pushed out at some velocity. And I'll call that the exhaust velocity. And so this is the equation of motion. And typically what we do instead of finding the position is we find the velocity with respect to time. So this is really the acceleration is dv by dt, 
or mv dot and so you can solve for dv by dt by oops I moved the m over too early so now move the m over and you get something like this Solving for the velocity. And so now we are going to take into account the fact that our, this m dot uh, depends on time. So we can rewrite this as one over m dm by dt the exhaust. And so now you see you got dt's that cancel, and we have 1 over m dm v exhaust. So for simple kind of problems, we'll just assume that the exhaust velocity is constant, and then the doing this integral of 1 over m with respect to mass, we'll integrate both sides and integral of one over M would be the natural log of M. And the limits that we'll use will go from some initial mass to some final mass. And so that using a property of natural log, you subtract a final minus an initial, that's the same thing as, oh, and we drop the minus sign up here. That's the same thing as going from final divided by initial. And then the minus sign out in front lets us flip the numerator and denominator for our fraction. And we get this as our final result. So this is the kind of just a quick example for how you might treat um, systems that have variable masses. So now let's do another example. So in this example, we're going to look at a so this is a table, you have some length of rope on the table, and there's some length of rope that's falling off the table, and we want to know what the how the system will behave. So we will say that the the line density or the yeah, the line density of the rope is lambda. And so the total mass, that means that the total mass divided by the length equals that term lambda. So if we wanted to set up a Lagrangian for this, we would need to know the kinetic and potential energies. So the kinetic part, the whole rope is going to be moving. So the red part of the rope is going to be moving down. And the blue part of the rope that's on the table is going to be moving to the right. But in either case, both of those lengths of rope are going to be moving. So. We can just take the total um, 
mass of the rope and multiply it by the velocity that the whole rope is going to be moving with. And so I will just make up a double ver dummy variable called R, and that will be our kinetic energy for the rope. For the potential energy of the rope, now only the part of the rope that's hanging, or the red part, is going to be experiencing a potential energy due to gravity. So the rope on the top is experiencing a force of gravity, but it's being balanced by the normal force from the table. However, the red part, since there's no nothing supporting it, it's just falling straight down by gravity, so it's experiencing a gravitational potential energy. So the mass of the rope that's hanging times the gravitational acceleration. And then we also have to pay attention to where the force of gravity acts on this part of the rope. So if we remember from Newtonian mechanics, gravitational forces act on the center of mass of an object. So I'm going to define the part of the rope that's hanging over the table, or that's fallen off the table, as R. So now the part that's the location where the force of gravity is acting is going to be r over 2. So that length that's hanging over the table is r, and the center of mass of that is would just be r over 2. OK, so now we have our Lagrangian, but we've got these two separate masses that are involved. And both of these masses are actually going to change. Well, I guess the total mass isn't going to change, but this hanging mass is actually going to be changing as a function of time. So we could follow the prescription that we did previously, uh, but there's going to that's going to end up having a lot of extra terms in our Euler-Lagrange equation because now we have to take derivatives with respect to time for this hanging mass. So instead, what we can do is use this lambda term that we defined earlier and try to recast our masses in terms of that, uh, that lambda. So what we can do with our kinetic energy is we'll take this mass, and we already have just basically rearranged this equation so that mass equals lambda L. Okay, so now we get lambda L r dot squared for the hanging mass. Now we will use lambda again. And now the amount of rope that's hanging, we said the length of that was r. So this will just become r. And then we have the g and the r over 2 from before. So if we combine those two r's, we get something that looks like this, lambda r squared g over 2. So now we've got a Lagrangian that has a kinetic and a potential term. And the only thing that's going to be changing, or the only variable that we really have to worry about is r dot and r, and none of the other terms will be time dependent. So if we do our procedure, take the derivative with respect to r dot for the Lagrangian and take the time derivative of that, we'll get lambda l r double dot and then the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to r will give us 
lambda r g. We set these two equal to each other. Lambdas will cancel. And now our double dot equals R G over L. And so what we've just found is the, this is the equation of motion for the hanging part of the mass. And so what this is telling you is that the acceleration of the rope that's falling will actually depend on how much rope has actually gone over the edge of the table. And so to check that this makes sense when the length of rope that's fallen off the edge of the table, so R is length that has fallen off the table. So when R equals L, what happens? So what happens when all of the rope has fallen off the table? So then we just plug in R equal to L. You see that your two L's cancel, and you get R double dot equals G. So when all rope falls off the table, the rope is in free fall. But before this point, so before R equals L, R is always going to be less than L. And so the acceleration of the falling part of the rope is actually less than the acceleration due to gravity. And that's a consequence of the extra mass that's on the table, basically not allowing for the full mass to be experiencing free fall. So there's a couple of different techniques that you can use for dealing with these variable mass systems. You can either uh, just deal with the varying mass when you take your time derivatives in your Euler-Lagrange, or like in this example, we can find a way to uh, basically use different constraints and parameters to uh, kind of circumvent the fact that the mass of the system is changing. 